Okay, in this video, what I'm showing is this cell back here. Um, you can see I've got pennies in the bottom. Um, this is a zinc chloride mix, and this is uh, ex -Nubi, uh being used as a air cathode here. It is um, able to absorb and put out oxygen through here, though I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Um, these pennies were bright copper before I started playing with this, but zinc seems to be falling on them as I expected. Um, right now what I've done is completely discharge um, this cell. Uh, I've been running, it's now down to less than 10 milliamps and um, hopefully it's voltage is around nothing uh, 0.1 or less let's go see uh, so we're at 0.16 volts um, out of this cell and it's pushing less than um, 6 milliamps so now what we'll do is charge it um, first I'm going to tune this voltage down so that you can actually see as the power goes in the amps will go up um, 1.2 is around its theoretical voltage let's see how much power will go in at 1 volt take those leads off and put So it's pulling 30 milliamps right now at 1 volt, and then it quits pulling milliamps once it hits that. So we turn the voltage up just a little, around 1.2, 1.3, it'll pull 40 milliamps, and it'll do that until it's full. It may, it may take a few minutes because I actually um, pulled that out, but the, here's here's where we'll get more power into it and so now it's pushing 40 milliamps it's recharging the battery 40 milliamps at 1.7 volts and last time I brought it up to around 2.25 um, at the very end of the charge that's as high as I wanted to over voltage it for now about one volt over percentage base it's huge though 100% almost and so it'll finally quit pulling amperage at this voltage uh, once it's charged I'm going to try to, we'll come back down to this number. I'm going to jump up some to see how quick I can charge it. That's weird. Notice that went down a little. And so now it's not pulling any type of current at 1.7 volts. Disconnect this. 
I'm going to leave that one on just because it'll make this part easier. Sorry about that, I had to set the phone down while I connected the leads to the multimeter. See we got it charged now up to 0.82 volts. Earlier it was um, registering higher than that. So let's reconnect. Seven There's a way I could pause the video. There we go. It's charged up to 0.95. I'm going to do it this way now. And it charged earlier up to around 1.4, 1.5. I'm gonna boost it. Oh, I have to do this. Okay, now we're up there. So, watch it drain some. So it's pulling 60 milliamps. 50.
Now it's at around 1 volt, 1.08 volts. Forty milliamps, thirty-nine. So it's not at all anywhere even close to what I can do with aluminum in terms of power. Um, but I haven't gotten to play with that aluminum with my new toy here yet, so I'm excited. But that is definitely a rechargeable zinc aluminum air battery. Um, flip back over here. Now we're going to charge it. Should be on 2.2 volts, uh, constant voltage. Pulling 40 milliamps. Showing here. The voltage is steadying out where I took the charger off of it. Not sure what it would fall to. I, this is the first time I've ever used this cell um, for more than just testing purposes. Uh, just to dip a um, cathode into to see what type of voltages I was getting. Um, as, as you can obviously see, I didn't charge it near as long. I didn't hit it with high voltages there. That it should jump back up. And then it'll discharge. Uh, it takes quite some time to fully discharge, even in a short circuited configuration with this. This has a lot of resistance inside of it, so um, it does okay. But even with it shorted out, this will take some time to drop back down into the 6 milliamp range that I had it. Uh, but it is charging and discharging again it's nowhere near as powerful um, as aluminum chloride um, and I guess it's time to start playing with aluminum chloride more I may play with the zinc more because it's uh, I don't know it's platable um, but that's the cathode cathode it's barely in there. I would get much higher amperages if I used a larger cathode and stuck it deeper in there. Um, if I stuck this cathode all the way in there, I would get higher amperages also. Uh, see if I can stick it in some. Whoa! Yeah, it jumped up, but up. There we go. So you can see that the more area of the cathode that's in contact with the electrolyte, the higher the amperages are. Um, I'm not sure that the air has anything at all to do with this particular battery configuration. Um, I, I, it may just be strictly a graphite acting as a catalyst in some sort of reaction between zinc chloride. Um, I. I don't know, it's, it's kind of cool. The amperage going up drastically with the cathode fully submerged. Um, I, I don't see how the oxygen can come into play. The um, All the water in it should be uh, dissolved with um, urea. It's a urea and zinc chloride mix here. You can see it's just 20 milliamps and it'll do this for a long time um, and then it should probably be around half a volt
Let's charge it real fast for fun. Yep. We're getting 60 milliamps through it. Showing two here, 2.04 here. Let's turn up the juice. Go to 4.2 volts. Ooh. 140 milliamps. Twenty milliamps. Jump up to five just for fun. Now we'll slowly bring it down. Wham, discharge it. Pretty awesome. Again, nowhere n even close to aluminum. <laughs> May have something to do with all that copper down there, though.